Welcome to Arts Beat with Kate. I am Kate Brown, keeping you in the beat of art in the Commons Valley. Today, we're charmed by the colorful, playful paintings of artist Pamela Font. We explore the lure of nature photography through the lens of artist photographer, Terry Thurman. We visit the colorful, vibrant studio of landscape artist, Brian Buckrell. Once you have signed your masterpiece, it's time to take it for the final finishing touch to white framing and gallery. And to add sparkle and light to your world, we visit the studio of glass artist, Loris Dawn. New beginnings, spiritual evolution, divinity, inspiration, good fortune. Whether you choose the spirit feather that catches your attention and wakens you, or your loved one selects it for you, is a gift that will surely enlighten you. Your spirit feather will always remind you that you are loved. Yes, I couldn't stop. I just couldn't stop and it became my passion then and there with nature, of course, because that's my solace out there. Laura's Dawn discovered her passion for the colour and light of cut glass after taking a course in Gold River. She played with glass and wire and made figures and bugs. Never following a round circle, I would start square and then go round or, or triangle and then just adjust the coil so that it would be a spiral. And I loved that, but when I took that course and I could see colours instantly, I, I soon learned colour therapy, the vibrations of the colours and how they change your moods. They sold. People asked for more, and she developed her skill in cutting, wrapping, and soldering glass. She collected interesting items like watch parts, antique lenses, crystals, and driftwood, and created one-of-a-kind art pieces. But it's just finding the exact pieces, because when you get these bulk watch bags from um, eBay, you don't always get the same. Once a talented potter, Loris transferred her skills to glass. She makes candle holders, glass lampshades for interior designers, glass window art for Rogers Chocolates, geckos, bugs and mobiles for gift stores, and an ever popular item, glass feathers. But the spirit feathers are something I designed last year and um, because they're sentimental, the feeling of love and generosity and nature all wrapped up in that um, youthful feeling we had of freedom and joy, you know, just a good feeling. Um, it came to me and Spirit Feathers came to me and I made a few and they were selling before I could even start really producing them and now I've got them in many, many galleries and people love them and I love them. If you've seen other um, stained glass uh, this and the solder lines are not good. It's because they don't take the time. I'm not reading books or knitting. I'm in here. If I'm feeling blue, I just need to start touching the colors of the glass and I'm, my energy's up and I feel like myself. And, and I think that's something artists who don't realize what passion they've got down and they're, they're not finding themselves or haven't found themselves yet. Um, to get expressive through the arts and the colours. To find out more about Laura's Dawn Glass, go to www.spiritfeathers.ca. In the Comox Valley, I am Kate Brown. Tucked away in the corner of a garage, the studio is a busy yet tranquil place surrounded by an array of colourful, happy, joyful paintings. Pam mixes colours on her glass palette. Painting is Pam's passion. And I've always done things with my hands, um, from as a girl learning to do embroidery with my grandmother, to sewing with my mother, to dried flower arrangements, Father Christmases, um, always, always. Hope, love, joy, peace 
are words on a Buddhist prayer flag hanging above her workbench. These are some of the inspiring elements Pam incorporates into her art. This one's getting really busy, so it's got to stop soon. I've got to take out some of the busyness, and then I just have to make sure that the colors are blended well enough, and I'm done. Art is fun for all ages. Painting is a great way to do things with grandkids. This is my grandson. He would have been three up in Grand Prairie, and um, he was catching snowflakes. And I took this picture of him, and his cheeks were bright red, and he was just so sweet. Pam works in layers, ever-changing the art, ever-evolving, taking on many twists and turns. And that's the shape of the milkweed. And then, I don't know, just the peas came in because they're pod-shaped. I mean, the flowers are out of my head, so <laughs> they could be anything. When I have paints left, I put them on a canvas, just willy-nilly, and then when I think I've got a nice build-up of colors, then I'll start doing the painting. So it could take weeks. A revelation of how an artist's mind and subconscious transform on canvas before our very eyes. How does it feel when a painting sells? Over the moon and beyond. Right. Over the moon and beyond, yeah. And the fact that I have sold paintings blows me away. But I'm um, honoured and thrilled and, and uh, all those positive, wonderful things. For more information on Pam Font's art, go to artgroupofthecomoxvalley.net or visit her at Central Island Studio Tour May 27, 28 and 29. In the Comox Valley, I am Kate Brown. Find your passion expressing the vibrance of nature in landscape painting with Andrina Cacholti. I love this story. It's very classic Comox Valley. Retire here from another province. Be active, enjoy the mountain, enjoy the sports and the landscape. And then our story takes a wonderful twist. It's all about back and forth and back and forth. It's not a, a straight line anymore for me. Our story takes a twist because Brian Buckrell retired here from a professional career as a professor and he serendipitously visited a gallery, looked around and thought, perhaps I can be an artist too. I was a veterinarian. Um, I, I uh, worked in the area of reproductive technologies. I was a professor at the University of Guelph. And research is very much, it's creative. Um, it's fun in, in, in many respects. There's some downsides like there is to everything else, but the upside is that you're creating things. Uh, that creative bent is actually not dissimilar from, from art in some respects. Brian's art has been evolving through the years as he's become more confident in his skills and he's gone from merely representing what he's seen to more interpretation of what he's seen. And it's really lovely. My interest in painting is not to reproduce that as a photograph, but to try to take it and create something different with it. So these are examples. This is one I did yesterday. Uh, this is an example. And this is what, what I call a start. This is the first layer and it will sit and I'll refine it and add to it and do other things to it. But you can see the difference in the, I guess you'd call it punch from the um, uh, photo. It's very hard to be creative and playful and inventive when you're first starting uh, as an artist. You want to reproduce what you see. That's how you learn how to mix paint and so on. As you get a little more experience, you take gambles. It's, it's just called artistic risk. You just take a risk and try something and you learn from it. My perspective is that I mean, you can see the paintings out there, everyone's entirely different. Every painting is an experiment for me, and whatever happens to it, happens to it. And I'm a big believer in serendipitous change. I, I don't want to know the outcome, just let it happen. If I'm happy with it, great. If not, you junk it and start over. So. Brian has been welcomed into the Comox Valley Arts community. He's one of a number of artists that call the Comox Valley home. I think there's an awful lot of people here that are into art in various forms um, and that's wonderful and, and it's I think because it's an aging community as well the mo majority of the ones that I know here are seniors or close to it um, there are a number of young ones that are doing it professionally as well but the bulk of them are uh, those that have moved on to try something new in their later years and it's a great spot for that so this really is a classic Comox Valley story to come into this community and become part of it 
and even start teaching within that community and sharing your knowledge and your expertise. In the Comox Valley for Shaw TV, I'm Andrina Kasholti. We visit White's Framing and Gallery in Comox with Andrina Kasholti. White's Framing and Gallery is my go-to place in the Comox Valley for talking art. I love to see Phil and see what's going on. See if those colors go together. I don't know if they do or not. They might, yeah, the new, the new home colors. Gray's popular. Yeah. We quite often have people just come in to look at the, the artwork. Um, we are a destination place, so they do have to go out of their way to come here. So that's always nice. It's always a treat when they do go out of their way. I smile when I think of how businesses get started. Phil's business got started 40 years ago by his parents. His father was a teacher, his mother was an artist, and his mother said to his father, I really could use some framing for my artwork, and suddenly we have White's framing started 40 years ago, and now it's a pursuit that Phil is embracing and has expanded on. Uh, well, I have to give my parents credit, actually. They started this business uh, back in the 70s, and uh, it was strictly a framing area. They didn't really have any gallery shows. Um, I came back in the late 80s to help them out. They were going to retire, and I decided to stay with it. I, I quite enjoyed what they did. And it was probably early 90s. Uh, we started doing a couple shows. Uh, we, we would rent premises to put on a show. And it's only been in the last six, seven years or less that we've started putting on gallery shows. Brian Buckroll was our first. Uh, and it was very successful and that kind of made the tone or where we were deciding to go. I think if we had a less successful show we may not stay in the gallery business, but uh, it proved to be a very, very good experience. Um, uh, and, and Brian has been a very successful um, element of it all for us. So. My dad, when he was in World War II, he, he was an industrial art student before that, so he found a bar of steel and made a blade. Uh, the hilt is made from Belgian coins and the fuselage off a French plane. The, uh, the sheath is made from um, the leather he cut off a dead soldier's boot. And uh, he had this sitting around the house, you know, in a, in a cupboard. We were never allowed to play with it as kids, but uh, eventually I thought it needed to be framed and displayed. White's Framing and Gallery has been a great cheerleader for the local arts community. Not only are they framing local artists' work, but they also have a gallery where it's on display. We are spoiled for artists. Musicians, artists, carvers, potters. Uh, it's unbelievable how, how many we have for such a small community. So. White's Framing and Gallery is a great place to stop in and see the art and see what's going on in the arts community. In the Comox Valley for Shaw TV, I'm Andrina Kusholti. Capturing the poise of a finch in a camera lens. Through the lens of artist photographer Terry Thurman. Steady, steady, now. If you're into nature photography, it can sure take a steady hand and a whole lot of patience. There it goes. The Comox Valley's Terry Thorman has the patience. He has a lightweight camera. But most of all, he has the passion for capturing wildlife images. I'd say right now it's my main passion. I am retired, so uh, I, I do my photography primarily because I thoroughly enjoy it. Terry's amazing nature snapshots are so well composed, it's almost like his subjects willingly cooperated with him. Nature photography definitely requires patience, and um, previously I've worked as a grizzly bear tour guide. Uh, so you spend a lot of time sitting very quietly and waiting, and just simply sitting, quiet, waiting, sitting, quiet, waiting. And eventually the, the waiting will pay off, and you'll get the bear come up close and walk right in front of you, and you'll get the shots you want. And for nature photography, often the opportunities are very, very brief. And if you don't get on your subject very quickly, you've lost it. 
This is particularly true with bird photography, of course. Terry picked up his first single lens reflex camera in 1974, and he hasn't looked back since. It started out as a documentation tool for his work of the day, but eventually that camera became a tool for creative expression. It really is in many respects an art form, and uh, it's, it, it's an art form that it's easy to share with other people. Uh, with the digital age now, of course, I have a website. All of my images go on my website. I belong to the Comox Valley Photographic Society. I share my images that way, and uh, so I'm creative and I can share my uh, creativity very easily. Terry has been um, a, a great uh, addition to the Comox Valley Photographic Society. He is a wealth of information, uh, an entomologist with the Royal Alberta Museum for years. So he's uh, someone that we can always count on to, um, he gives great presentations about uh, his photography, which he specializes in amazing dragonflies and insects uh, photos. The Comox Valley Photographic Society is a group of dedicated amateur photographers who work collectively to improve and perfect their art. The interests of these artists range from the Great Wall to your backyard fence. And the beauty of Terry's work speaks for itself. In the Comox Valley, this is Franco Noviello. Whether it's making whimsical, fun paintings, capturing a finch in a camera lens, expressing the vibrance of nature in landscape painting, framing paintings to show in your homes, or the simple joy of luminous light in coloured glass. All forms are art to be enjoyed here in the Comox Valley. Join us again on Artsbeat in the Comox Valley. I'm Kate Brown.